Grace and peace multiply to you and yours and knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High God, the Savior, to those that keep His commandments. Hope everybody's having a great day. Thank God He allowed us to wake up and see another day with His precious breath of life in us. It is April 21st, 2018. Thank God He allowed us to see another Lord's Sabbath day. Now, I'm coming to you today because there's a a problem going on in the world and, and we all know that there are many problems in the world but I mean on a simple level a simple a level that, that, that really determines whether we want to be blessed by God or blessed by Satan and it all comes down to one thing and that's what we hear with our ears and that's why the title of this lesson is called Itching Ears because we want to hear what we want to hear. But nine times out of ten, what we want to hear is not what we need to hear. Ten times out of ten, what we want to hear is not the truth. Bottom line. So, open up your Bibles to the New Testament. See, I'm starting start in the New Testament. And I'm going to end in the New Testament for my New Testament that only want to have part of the book or want to cherry pick what they want to find out of the Word of God. Turn in your Bibles to the New Testament, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy 4. Beginning with verse 1. 2 Timothy 4, beginning with verse 1. Titus is after Timothy. Timothy is after Thessalonians. Verse 1, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing. When is he going to judge? When he come back. And who he going to judge? <laughs> Everybody, the quick and the dead. Verse 2, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Oh, you ain't supposed to argue the Bible. <laughs> no, ain't nobody arguing. But a lot of people twist scriptures. A lot of people come up with their own righteousness instead of the righteousness of God. <laughs> you, you, you hear somebody with a lie, you straighten that lie out with the truth. Bottom line. Let me read that again. Verse 2. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Mm. Did, did you peep game on that? It said they're going to have people that they, that they want to hear that's going to tell them what they want to hear, but not the truth. Ain't that something still going on today? still going on to this day and it's going to be a sad day at judgment because <laughs> they're going to say Lord haven't we prophesied in your name have we cast out devils haven't we did this haven't we did that and the Lord going to say depart from me you workers of iniquity I never knew you where's that final destination going to be lake of fire it's just that simple because you listen to what you listen to those false prophets False teachers, false evangelists that told you what you wanted to hear. They want they they told you things that made you feel good. But they ain't tell you my word. <laughs> ain't that something? Mm, mm, mm. Uh, but that's another lesson. Verse 4. Let me let me read that again. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Whoa. He said they're going to turn away their ears from the truth. What is the ultimate truth? God's word. Because God cannot lie to us. But they're going to listen to some man, or, or nowadays some woman, that's feeding them lies. Tell them they're going to go up to heaven. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Tell, tell them they can eat anything, long they, eat anything they want as long as they pray. Eat a poisonous snake, snake and pray over that. Hmm. See what happens. 
common sense. Read the book. It is here for our edification. It is our instruction manual for salvation. We got to read it, keep it, and do it. And we got to hear it, not lies. Turn to the Old Testament, Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5, beginning with verse, verses 1 through 5, and I'm going to skip to 20. Jeremiah chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. It says, Run, run ye to and, through, to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now, and know, and seek in the broad places thereof, if ye can find a man, if there be any that execute judgment, that seeketh the truth. Hmm. Say, look for somebody that, that sounds familiar. That sounds like in the days of uh, Solomon and Gomorrah, right? <laughs> when, when the Lord told him, see, see if you can find somebody that, that's, that's, that, that's going to follow me. Abraham, a, a, Abraham said, uh, can, can, he, he, he started at, what, 50 men? Was it 50 men? Then he went all the way down to 10. Couldn't even find 10 righteous people in the city. And what happened to Solomon and Gomorrah? Got destroyed, did What a shame. We are getting back to those days now. Let me read that again. Verse 1. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof if ye can find a man, if there be any that execute of judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. And though they say, the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. Hmm. Ain't that going on today? <laughs> Oh, oh, the Lord loves me. Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. But you ain't doing nothing the Lord said do. <laughs> Verse 3. Oh, Lord, art not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. Hmm. Lord say, don't, 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 don't trip when I, on, on this chastisement. Because when you, when you disobey me, I got to whoop you. I got to punish you. He said, they have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Ooh, that's how almost like a reprobate mind to me. Say, they refuse to return to the Lord. Ain't that something? Skip down to verse 20. I know it said, uh, uh, yeah, I know it said 1 through 5, but skip to verse 20 for a second time. I've been babbling. Verse 20. Declare this in the house of Jacob and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, woe, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not, woe. So what good is your ears if you ain't hearing what the Lord said? Verse 22. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord? Will ye not tremble at my, at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by perpetual decree, that means forever, that it cannot pass, and though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet cannot, can they not prevail? Though they roar, yet can they not pass over? But this people have a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth rain, both the former and the latter, in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Skip down to verse 31. It says, The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. Mm, they love to hear them lies and false prophets tell them. Ain't that so? Today, it's 2018, we got billions of followers of false prophets. Football stadiums full of people. And they love to hear it. This is what the book say. This is what the word of God telling us, warning us. We can't be like this. Now, go to Micah chapter 2. Micah, that's a little bit before you get to the New Testament. Micah chapter 2. That's after the book of Amos and Jonah. Micah chapter 2, 2 verses here, verse 11, then I'm going to go backwards to verse 6. Micah chapter 2, verse 11. It says, if a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, 
saying, I will prophesy un unto thee of wine and of strong drink. Whoa, he ain't talking about liquor. He talking about false doctrine. <laughs> he said wine and strong drink. So that means it's some, it's, ooh, it's some straight up heresy. He said, not heresy, heresy. He shall even be the prophet of this people. Mm. We got plenty of them. Now go back with the verse six. It says, prophesy ye not. Say they to them that prophesy. They shall not prophesy to them that they shall not take shame. They ain't even ashamed. Ain't that something? And they know they being lied to. And on top of that, they stealing their money. Mm. Go to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs 4, one verse here. No, 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 no. No, a few verses. So starting with verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4, beginning with verse 20. My son, attend, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my sayings. This is the Lord. Speaking by the mouth of Solomon. <laughs> says, incline thy ear unto my sayings. Verse 21, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Verse 23, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Ain't that what we want? Don't we want eternal life? Don't we want to live forever? Don't we want to reign with Christ a thousand years on this earth when he return? <laughs> what you got to do to get there? Endure unto the end. The same shall be saved. Ain't that what he told you in Matthew 24? <laughs> and you got to keep the commands. Just, just, just that simple. Uh, did I read verse 23? Okay. Now, go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 30. I'll show you a little bit more in detail about these itching ears. I told you about it in the New Testament with 2 Timothy. Uh, but I'm going to show you something. Isaiah chapter 30 beginning with verse 1. It says, Woe to the rebellious children. Mm. Ain't that what I read in, in what, Jeremiah? <laughs> Say, woe to the rebellious children, that saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. <laughs> so they ain't taking the Lord's counsel, they take somebody else's counsel. And, and, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Whoa. Mm. Verse 2 that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Didn't the Lord tell us in the book of Ezekiel, anybody that follow after uh, Egypt is going to fall? We still got people doing that today. <laughs> you know, we still got, got people worshiping Egypt today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's another lesson. I, I ain't going to get started on that. Uh, where am I? Verse 3. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. That's right. That's all it is. Confusion. Because they run around here worshiping after ancient Pharaoh and whatnot, and wearing these pagan symbols of, 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 of pagan crosses, which is the ankh. You know, a cross with a loop on the top. Matter of fact, Matter, you know what I learned. You, you know, you know what I learned today. The dome of the rock has a an ark on the top of it, a pagan cross. Ain't that something? Whoa! What is this world coming to? <laughs> Idolatry everywhere. That's another lesson as well. Now skip to verse eight. Now go write it before them in a the table and note it in the book that it may be for the time to come, forever and ever. Hmm. What you just do when you put it in a book, you have hidden it. Because this book been around us all our lives and ain't nobody reading it. Ain't that something? Nobody is reading the word of God. They want to come up with philosophies out of their own mind and tell you, tell you stories to make you feel good, tell you what you want to hear, but not the truth. Verse 9, that this is a rebellious people, lying children. <laughs> Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Mm. They will not hear it. 
Verse 10, we say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. They want to hear lies. That's, that's all it is to it. They want to hear lies. And that lie, those lies are going to get them in the lake of fire. Bottom line. Now, verse 11, go you, <coughs> get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore, thus said the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon, therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. Uh, am I supposed to go further? That was verse 13. Skip to verse 15. It said, For thus said the, the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. Whoa. So you listen to everybody else, you will have rest, quietness, peace, but you would refuse, you refuse, you would not. Same thing, same thing the Lord said in Matthew 23, verse 37. He said, How often would I have gathered you as a he ain't got the chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Still going on right now. Ain't nothing changed. Solomon told us ain't nothing new under the sun, especially when it comes to the people of this book. Now, Ezekiel chapter 13. Ezekiel 13, beginning with verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy. And say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. Mm. Hear ye the word of the Lord. But say the Lord God. Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit. Mm. Ain't, that what, ain't that what King Saul did? <laughs> when that evil spirit vexed him, he prophesied. <laughs> said, he said, said, an angel of the Lord departed from Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord Vexed him. <laughs> we got a bunch of evil spirits around us now. Right here on this earth trying to get us to turn from God. <laughs> Let me read verse 3. Again, thus said the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Mm. <laughs> verse 4. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, Neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle, stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity and lying divination. Mm. <laughs> Say they ain't. <laughs> if they prophesy unto you a vision, it is good for nothing. That's what vain means. And it says lying divination. I'm gonna read on. The lying divination saying, the Lord said. And the Lord hath not sent them. Mm. And they have made others to hope that they will confirm the word. Mm. That's like that, that, that wall of untempered water. <laughs> this is Ezekiel 13, eh? <laughs> Verse 7. Have you not seen a vain vision? And have you not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, the Lord said, albeit I have not spoken. Mm. Woo! Okay. Go to Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah chapter 23, beginning with verse 1, 1 through 2, and I'm going to skip to 11. Jeremiah 23, beginning with verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors. Who? What? He said, woe be unto the pastors. And what do they do? That destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, said the Lord. Mm, mm, mm. And how are they doing that? By feeding them lies. Verse 2. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith the Lord. <laughs> it's coming. Skip to verse 11. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. In his house. <laughs> you got a bunch of them, too. <laughs> Skip to 
Skip to verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem and horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. Whoa. They live in the lies. And they commit adultery. <laughs> they strengthen also the hands of evildoers. Whoa. That's a reprobate mind. <laughs> they love to do evil and love to see other people do evil. Mm, mm, mm. That none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. See? <laughs> and the Lord, when he returns, is going to take out all the evil. Thank God for that. That was verse 14. Verse 15. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets. Behold, I will feed them with wormwood. Mm -mm, that's not good. And make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profane is going forth into all the land. Now. Okay, let me, let me read verse 16. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. Bottom line. Bottom line. It ain't nothing changed because it's still going on to this day. You hear me? Bear with me. Now, what was that, verse 16? Uh, verse 16, I'm going to go to verse 17 and 18. Verse 17, they say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Ain't that saying up today in these churches? <laughs> Quoting Isaiah 54, I believe it's 54 or 55. Where it says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. But if you ain't doing what the Lord said, do he ain't got his, he ain't got his hedges around you. He ain't got no protection around you. We still see people dying to this day. Horrible deaths. Are they, are they keeping the commandments? Does the Lord have his protection around them? Better think about it. Think about what, what, what the Lord say. We're going to be judged on every idle word that come out of our mouth. And, and in Revelation, you tell you, you're going to be judged on your works. Now, verse 18. For who have stood in the counsel of the Lord and have perceived and heard his word? Who have heard it? Who was hearing the word of God? Because a lot of people, we got cherry pickers now. They pick and choose what they want to teach you out of the word of God. Instead of straight book. Sending them out there into the world and man, it's sad. They have no knowledge. He said, who have marked his word and who have heard it? The Lord is putting the question on the table. Now, go to the New Testament. Go to Romans chapter 10. Romans 10, beginning with verse 1. Lord said, I've been calling y'all and calling y'all, and y'all not answering me. <laughs> People say, oh, we're waiting on the Lord. No, the Lord is waiting on us. You can't be a bench member for Christ. You got to do what he say. Obedience is the key. What he say in John 14? If you love me, keep my commandments. Romans chapter 10, beginning with verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Whoa. So they got great zeal, but not according to his knowledge. <laughs> what do they do in these churches? They say, come on down in the basement. We're going to fix some uh, sausage and eggs and uh, grits. And maybe when, after service, we're going to have some rib tips and, you know, some sausage links. <laughs> All unclean. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have some catfish too. And that's going to be on Friday. <laughs> Unclean. Because the Lord has a dietary law. But that's another lesson. Uh, I'm going to read on. Let me, let me read verse 2 again. He said, For I bear them that they have a, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, 
but not according to knowledge. <laughs> For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Mm. Ain't that something? Skip to verse 13. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoa! I remember that back in 2003. I heard, I heard a preacher say that. I'm walking down the street. I'm just calling on his name, calling on his name. A week later, I went through all kind of mess. Because I wasn't doing what the Lord said to do. But I called on his name. That's why you have to read this with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. <laughs> you got to do something. You got to repent. You got to change your ways. You got to walk in newness of life. You can't be listening to them lies all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to get that out your system. Start over. Boom. Hit reset. Verse 13 again. says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Whoa. How are you going to call on somebody you ain't believe? Because if you ain't keeping his commandments, you sure don't believe in the Lord. <laughs> and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Whoa. So a lot of people died. I mean, whoo. Billions of people. They listened to the one that Paul warned us about. He said, he that come and preach to you another Jesus. The one that the world bring. Not the one that's written in this book. That's the one they follow. That's the one they hear him. Verse, verse 14 again. He said, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Hmm. A preacher that was sent. Because we got a lot of preachers out there that ain't that's just lying to the people. And stealing their money. Now, go to Ecclesiastes 12. A few more after this and I'll be done. Bear with me, bear with me. Thank you all. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Beginning with verse 9. It said, And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Whoa! We don't see that today, do we? They ain't teaching them knowledge. They teach them to shake it up, shake it down, and do whatever you want, and you still gonna get into the kingdom. Mm. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. Boom. Because you got a lot of them out here now. They are, they are not, right, not rightly dividing the word of God. Uh, what was that? Even words of truth. Skip to verse 13. Verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Whoa! This is in the Old Testament. And I just quoted Matthew, uh, I just quoted John 15, John 14, verse 15, where he said, If you love me, keep my commandments. See, the Bible don't contradict itself. You know, you got to, you, man, you got to read it. He said, for this is the whole duty of man. That's your job. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. <laughs> can't hide from the Lord. You can run, but you can't hide. Now, go to New Testament, 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 2. Yes, right before you get to 1 John, 2 Peter chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. It says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Who probably shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious way. Did it say a few? No, it said many. But the Lord told us, broad is the way to destruction, and narrow is the way to salvation, and few there be that find 
Just because everybody jumping off a three-story building, does that mean you're supposed to do it too? I think not. Matter of fact, I know not. You got better common sense than that. These people feeding them lies and they know they lying to them and they still going to these, these churches. <laughs> these false prophet churches, let me put it like that. Let, let me read that again, verse one. But, uh, verse two, and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Because when we open up this Bible to somebody, they, they, oh, they reject it. They act like it's evil or something, like it's a curse. You know what I'm saying? Hey, act like vampires with, with garlic or something. Like that. I'm like, oh my God, you don't even want to hear the word of God? <laughs> Where's your final destination going to be, brother or sister? Verse 3, and through covetousness shall they with fain words make merchandise of you. Yes, sir. Taking that money. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness, that means they here, but you can't see them with your, with your naked eye, <laughs> to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, <laughs> bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. All those things that happened were examples for us to know we got to walk straight. Bottom line. Verse 7. And deliver just like vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Yeah, because Lot was living amongst the, the, the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah. He knew they was wicked. So it vexed him. Now, I'm sure that's happening to a lot of y'all. You see what's going on in the world, and you be like, whoa. Man, I'd be glad when the Lord get back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To clean up the evil. Uh, what was that? Was that verse, verse 8? Verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. That's right. That's why it's better to be on the Lord's side when he returns. And you got to start working on that now while you're still alive. Because if you don't, you will die in your sins. Plain and simple. Go to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation 1, beginning with verse 1. 1 through 3. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. How did it happen? From the Father to the Son, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So that's the protocol. From the Father to the Son, the Son give it to the angels, and the angels give it to man, and man teach the rest of the world. That's how it's supposed to be. Verse 2, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all the things he saw. Verse 3, blessed he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. You got to read it, you got to hear it, and you got to do it. Bottom line. Go to Amos chapter 8. And one more after this. Amos chapter 8. Verse 11 and 12. Verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Mm. We in that famine right now. Don't nobody want to hear the word of the Lord. They want to hear fables. They want to hear lies. They will not listen to the truth. Verse 12, and they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. Mm. Lord say, oh, you don't want to hear my words? I'll keep rejecting my words. And when you start looking for it, it's going to be too late. Go back to Romans 10. Back to the New Testament. And this will be last. Romans chapter 10. Romans 
Romans 10, beginning with verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Mm. That's right. You gotta have a preacher that was sent by God, not, not some man. <laughs> As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. What are good things? Keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments. If you teach nothing, uh, anything other than that, whoo, your faith is in vain. You teaching the ways of the world. <laughs> you teaching that sneaky stuff, that, that stuff that's gonna get people caught up in, caught up in, not caught up in the in the sky, caught up in a lie. <laughs> uh, where am I? Let me let me read that again. It says, uh, it says, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who have believed our report? Mm. Verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Mm. Mm. Then I just read that in uh, Revelation chapter 1. So you got to read it, and hear it, and do it. You got to hear it. Because if you're hearing lies all day long, or every Sunday, <laughs> man. Ooh -wee. You got to pray to the Lord, get, let him open your eyes and give you some knowledge, wisdom, and understanding and ask him to keep his head from you. But, but, but the main thing, you got to do your part. You got to change your ways, walk in newness of life, and, and, and hey, stay strong. So that's the end of the lesson. Itching ears. People tell you, all kind of stuff. I mean, from from the from the teacher to the pastor to the politician to this person and that person and the other. Everybody want to feed you what you want to hear, but nobody's telling. Nobody's dealing with the truth because we are in the last days. Everybody is so greedy. They out for their own selves. They out for their own pockets. They don't care about people. Jesus told us in Matthew 24, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. <laughs> Ain't that something? You know, you've seen that. You see that going on right now. Don't know why I care about nobody no more. It's a, it's, it's a sad day. It's a sad day. And you got a lot of pretenders. Not just, not just in so-called quote-unquote religion, you got them everywhere. You got you got the you got the 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 guys <laughs> uh, trying to hustle the women, telling them all kind of things they want to hear. If I'm gonna give you an example, and this is not not to say anything hurtful any, about anybody because I'm a humble guy, but just say for instance, for example, if a woman has a very bad a condition, a very bad condition called eczema. That's when your skin is all, you know, break out in blotches and stuff sometimes. Okay, and say the eczema is on her face. So it makes her face really, you know, her face is always breaking out. And it makes makes her look kind of funny. And a guy steps to her and says, Oh, you so fine. Come here, baby. Let me let me, let me Come here, let, let me holler at you. Let, give me your number. Let, let's go on a, on a date. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to treat you like the queen you deserve to be. You know, you are so beautiful. He lying to her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He telling her what she want to hear. That's those itching ears. That's why I always say we have to try the spirits. Because a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people, Put on this big facade like they are so, so such good, righteous people. But they are deceivers. That's another thing the Lord told us about that. In Matthew 24, he said, Take heed that no man deceive you. Man is a species, so that's male or female. Because he's got a lot of deceivers on the, on the female side as well. So, with that being said, Pay close attention to what's, what's being said around you. 
Don't have them itching ears just to hear, hear what you want to hear all the time. Because 99.9% .9 of the time it's going to be a lie. You have to have discernment of mind. You have to stay strong. You have to stay prayed up. And you have to do, most of all, keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments. And he'll keep his hedges around you and give you some understanding. Much love. Stay strong. Peace.